Hey guys, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we're going to be analyzing the Battlefield 3 Fault Line Series Episode 1 Bad Part of Town trailer. That is a mouthful name. Uh, so, anyway, we, we, we're told instantly that this is actual gameplay footage. It's not entirely cinematic like we are led to believe by the, the graphics, uh, which look fantastic. We are set in 2014 Iraq-Iranian border, 1300 Zulu time currently, and if you look in the bottom left, you see that we are playing as Henry Black Blackburn of the first Recon. And this is kind of important because that shows that we might actually be playing as multiple characters similar to the Call of Duty games. Uh, uh, either that or it's, it's the first level. We're going to take a look at the UI now. So if you look in the bottom left, you do see the, the time. Uh, you also see where our location is, which is not a specific city, but near the Iranian border. We are playing as Marine Staff Sergeant Henry Black Blackburn, first recon. In the very bottom left, you see our objective is to follow this guy in front of us, which is also indicated by the, the icon above his name. We also have a compass in the bottom left. Bottom right is kind of funny, so keep this in mind for later. We currently have 31 bullets and zero extra bullets. So our magazine is full and we've got nothing else to go on. We have one grenade, if we play a little bit forward here in a second, you keep an eye on the top left because you will see that's where our objectives are, and our current objectives are uh, something like staging area and, f and keeping with the squad. Um, those will get crossed out as we continue through the game, so keep an eye on that as well. New objectives are added as they are accessed. So we continue a little more. We see people getting patted down just like at the airport, so I guess they were training for something all along. You also see Humvees on the left. We have some kind of armored APC with treads on the right and a helicopter fly overhead. While these might not necessarily be playable in this particular campaign level, uh, they will absolutely be playable in multiplayer, and that has been confirmed by DICE. The game will have a lot more city and urban environments, unlike um, BF2 and BC2, where they were more outside and like Wake Island, stuff like that. Uh, as great as outdoors are, it will be nice to finally get some more focus on urban environments. Even though there were urban environments in the other games, they just weren't the primary focus of them. So now now we see our objectives, like I said a second ago, and uh, we continue and we will start talking to our commander or something like that. And he tells us that, quote, they were investigating a lead on a possible chem weapon site. And he also tells us that he's sending us to rec rescue a guy named Jackson at the Spins and Meat Market, which is apparently a bad part of town. So that's our objective. We're rescuing a guy. And and we're going to follow our, our squad here to go kick down the door and find them in a minute. There's a map, but you can't really see anything useful from a player perspective. It does add to the feel of the game and make it more realistic if you like campaigns and shooters, which most people probably just go to multiplayer right away. So this, this alleyway, even though it's just a running scene, is kind of cool because there are boxes on the left that you can use for your cover. The lighting is also really nicely done. Um, the shadows are all, are cast appropriately. We see shadows from the humans at, at the right angles. As we approach some of these doors later on, keep an eye on the shadows because you'll see that one of the NPCs actually goes almost black, which is it's great news for people who like sneaking around and knifing people because that means you'll be able to use shadow as, as cover. So we, we run through here past some usable cover if there were fire, but it's just a campaign mission. There's not going to be any fights here. We kick in the door, that's for uh, authorized personnel only, and of course we're the freaking marines, so we have any authorization we need. In this room, there is not much in terms of gameplay, but there is a lot of dust and a lot of particle effects. Uh, the, the dust was just like is just like that that was in Bad Company 2, which was kind of annoying for snipers, but it was nice for, for the inside building areas. Adds to the realism, but it also subtracts from gameplay at some times with, with scopes. And realistic or not, your scope's not going to get that blurred by dust. Sorry. Um, so hopefully they fix that. We get a tremor, which one guy thinks it's an ammo crate explosion or something like that, but we, we hear that it's a tremor from a fault line 90 clicks from us. That is likely a triggered event. It probably won't be happening randomly or dynamically at all, and it probably won't happen in multiplayer, but for purposes of single player, it is a triggered event that happens when you hit a certain area. Um, and that triggers the conversation as well. So it, it's staged, in short. Go up the stairs and see the lighting effects again on the guy in front of us. We run down the street, nothing too special here, break into the exit door, and this is where we get to, to the exciting part that you've probably heard about or you definitely focused on when you saw this trailer earlier. The guy in front of us, two things we want to note here as he's getting shot. He gets sniped, uh, we get splattered by blood, from him, which is hopefully, I really hope guys, let me know in the comments if you think this is going to happen, I really hope this actually will happen in game where you get splattered by people around you because that's just freaking cool uh, and it, it doesn't really happen in shooters. So uh, either we got injured or we got splattered by him, but the timing is, is it looks like we got sprayed. The second thing I want to note 
is look at this gangster on the left side. He just like comes flying over this fence like a pole vault and covers us while we drag this guy away by using S to drag him backwards, which is going to make medics a lot more fun to play. Uh, maybe more useful, not necessarily more fun. It is fun to res people and watch them get shot and res them again and again and again and again and again, but uh, this will make it so we can drag them out of the way behind our cover so that they don't just die every time we resurrect them with the... Uh, the defibrillators or whatever they give us in this game. I think he's actually injured here. I don't think he's dead because he asked for a sit rep early, uh, later on. So we take some cover. We see that the, the AI does act a lot more intelligently than in the games before. They try to take cover behind cars. The cars do explode, uh, which is unrealistic proof by Mythbusters. Sorry. But they do explode and uh, and we're sniping some of the guys out here nothing too special just some firefighting you remember that ammo that I told you about look in the bottom right notice how we now have 372 additional bullets so that guy that got shot must have been hoarding all the ammo or something because we just pulled out 400 rounds from nowhere but that's just a silly mistake on their part I think as the walls getting pegged it dust flies off and you know all that fancy stuff uh, we go unwittingly take cover behind this van that has not been exploded yet uh, despite our our leaders, please, and then we explode and die. So that's the trailer, guys. Uh, we see that part two is coming March 16th. We will analyze that as well if there's anything to be analyzed. Uh, mostly this was about UI and some gameplay like dragging people around and the cover system and the AI. Thanks for listening. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Please thumbs up this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want more. And this is Steve from GamersNexus.net.